So you're beginning to create content or maybe you've created content and you're just looking for more efficient ways to get it done. I'm gonna give you my top four tools that I use on a daily basis and my team uses on a daily basis to make sure we create super high quality content and get it out consistently. So I own a content marketing agency that produces and manages and publishes social media content, podcasting, and YouTube content all on the organic side of the content world. And we literally create and publish over a thousand pieces of content every single week. So there's a handful of tools that my team uses on a daily basis, like every single day, daily basis. And it is extremely simplified. And I, and I'm a person that loves process, but I love simplicity. Anybody that I work with when it comes to managing their content, I preach simplicity to them because if you can create simple foundations to your content creation strategy, you're not going to have any issues to get to where you're looking for, uh, you know, when it comes to putting out content. Now, of course, content creation, there's so many tools out there. And there's like, if you literally go to back to YouTube and search content creation tools for video content, you're going to have a million other options than the ones that I'm giving you now. I'm giving you the ones that I use personally and my team uses as well. And so this is like real live data. This is stuff that we actually do use. And I'm not just kind of like putting stuff out there. Now, I'm going to kind of go through each one of these and very briefly explain each one, but I'm going to highly encourage you as you're watching this video, kind of pause and go check these out as I'm talking about them and run through your simple methods of, you know, learning how to do it. And, I, and the, the advantage is, is that, you know, some of these tools are just extremely easy and self-explanatory to use, but the other ones, um, I'm going to be talking about like Riverside and CapCut. Those are going to be ones that you're going to want to go do a little bit of research on, go to YouTube and figure out like, you know, how to use CapCut, how to do this in CapCut, or how to do this in Riverside and that sort of thing. And just be, you know, a little bit more educational with yourself about that. I, this video is not a tutorial on how to use it. This video is a, here's what we use and why you should use it as well. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is Riverside, Riverside.fm. Fantastic, fantastic recording studio platform. Now, here's the thing. In my experience, I've used all the platforms, StreamYard, Zoom, uh, go to meeting, Google Meet, all of them. And uh, I've, you know, hosted podcasts on them. I've hosted meetings on them. I've been on podcasts with them. And I swear by Riverside.fm. I do not have any affiliation with them. But the reason being is because for me, number one is I'm recording this content right now. I have a DSLR camera that I'm able to plug into my, uh, my Mac mini here that is feeding incredible video content, right? And then that is going directly into riverside.fm. But one of the advantages of this versus say a Zoom is I've recorded content, plenty of content on Zoom. And that was a very popular thing to do for a very long period of time. The problem is, is that even if you have the highest subscription with Zoom, there's just something about it that doesn't retain the video quality at the maximum level that it possibly can. And when it comes to the video portion, obviously that's the asset. That's what I want to be the highest quality possible. So what you're seeing right now is being recorded through Riverside, well, through my camera into Riverside, and then my video editor is able to access my Riverside account, download these videos, and then edit them without losing any quality. And I'm just recording in 1080p right now, right? And Riverside can support up to 4K. I don't record in 4K for several reasons I won't get, in, get into. However, my, just, my thing is, with, especially with Zoom, I know Zoom is the popular one, it's not really meant for recordings like that and retaining maximum quality it's primarily made for and was built for meetings and maybe even webinars but for recording content like this or podcasts you know i know it's very popular for video podcasts um people to actually record their interviews over zoom do it through riverside i promise you it is just much higher quality it's going to maintain maximum quality on the video and the audio and it's just easier to kind of you know it's going to allow you to download separate files i know zoom does that but once again the quality is just not the same so Riverside.fm, and again, for me, I record all of my content, my podcasts, my solo videos, everything through Riverside, and it's just really easy to kind of go in and do, and then my editor can go access those. If you have a video editor that you work with, can literally just log into your Riverside. And so the next tool that I use is CapCut. CapCut is a video editing software that has both a desktop version and a mobile version. Now, for me specifically, I use the mobile version a hell of a lot more. I don't use a desktop version all that much. I've been using Adobe products for probably 15 or even 20 years. Way back in high school, I was using that in media class and that sort of thing. And so I'm just very familiar with, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Audition, and 
and Premiere Pro. So that Premiere Pro is my daily driver when it comes to video editing. However, if you're a beginning content creator and you've never used a software to edit video, CapCut will literally do everything for you that you need it to do. Uh, obviously, like with social media videos nowadays, you have the captions that will come across the screen and that sort of thing. They just pop up and, you know, they have effects where they zoom in, zoom out, or maybe they have lightning around them or whatever it is. CapCut can do all that kind of stuff, and it does it very easily. Easily, uh, One of the things that I absolutely love when I'm doing video on my phone uh, is I'll, you know, record the video on my phone, load it into CapCut, and then it'll auto-transcribe everything for me. And the transcription is actually... Normally, it's like to me 95 to 98% accurate, which is very, very unbelievable. Then you can select all of your text and that sort of thing, the style, the colors and all of that, and then reposition it or whatever, edit it if you need to. And it's very easy to do. You could literally shoot a video for social media on your phone like this, have it edited and published it within 10 minutes if you kind of knew how to work the system and you had a good workflow. But I do know that I have a couple of my editors on my team that do use the desktop version of CapCut, and I've used it before as well. It's very easy to use, very seamless, and kind of like the simplest editing platform that you can use next to, say, iMovie, which is, you know, your bare bones, basic video editing software. But if you need something that you can kind of take on the go with your iPhone, or you can do it on your desktop very easily, CapCut's going to be a golden winner for you. And I highly encourage you to check that out. And once again, like I mentioned earlier, go to YouTube and search how to use CapCut, how to do this on CapCut. And there's plenty of tutorial videos out there for you. The next tool I use is specifically for audio. Now, guys, here's the thing. If you're doing video, you know, regardless if you have a microphone or if you have a lapel mic, you know, podcast mic, professional podcast mic, lapel mic, whatever it is, there's still going to be some improvement that you can do on the audio. It's never going to sound exactly perfect in the way that you want it. Now, here's the thing, like you can be as picky and as much of a stickler as you want to, but everybody's going to be hearing the audio in different ways. Some people will watch the audio literally just on their phone speakers. Some people will have headphones on that are, you know, kind of earbuds that are not super high quality. And some people will have, you know, $400 Bose headphones on where it's like they can hear literally everything. So it's going to be different for everybody in the way that they hear audio. But I'm going to highly encourage you Make sure you improve your audio as thoroughly as possible because audio is just such a huge, huge part of the content system. And here's the thing that I've learned. Over the years, when it comes to quality, quality has significantly risen the creators that are the, the creators that are investing in quality, whether it's video quality or audio quality or both. Those are the ones who have kind of risen to the top at this point. Those who are still putting out Zoom videos, you know, back in 2020 because they were sitting in their office and not being able to, you know, uh, create content because they don't have a videographer coming out to them or anything. That's kind of done away with. People are sick and tired of that type of video now. Quality is the king. That's what people are going to be watching. And you don't have to build a $20,000 recording studio to achieve that. Adobe Audio Enhancer is the one I'm going to talk about next. This is the one way that you can literally take your audio, load it into the platform. It's automatically going to do some magic on it spit it out and you're going to have a perfect sounding video. It was in beta not too long ago, but it has significantly improved. They're going to be coming out with a version two, which is significantly better than the first one. So by the time you're watching this video, it's probably going to be out already. I highly encourage you to go check that out. Now you do need a subscription and all of these tools, you're going to just need a subscription, but I promise you these are the only ones that you're going to need subscriptions to, and it is well worth the money. But I know that, you know, some platforms like maybe even CapCut or Premiere Pro, they have internal voice enhancers. But to me, they just don't work as good as what this audio uh, enhancer from Adobe can get done. It just condenses the audio, makes it sound perfectly level. If you have different levels, maybe you're doing an interview because we use this for podcasts all the time. Maybe you have me and then the guest on the show and the guest audio for some reason is much lower than mine. It'll level everything out and make it sound really crystal clear. Does a really good job of Xing out any like dogs barking in the background, you know, lawnmowers going in the background, stuff like that. And it really does a good job of improving the audio. Mess around with it a little bit and listen to it because sometimes it can like improve it too much. But this is going to be the easiest way to do it. You literally take the, you, and now they have the ability at first it was just audio files. Now you can actually take video files that are under one gigabyte. If your video file is under one gigabyte, just export your audio because audio is never going to reach that that high of a um, gigabyte uh, storage amount. 
and then you plug that into your um, Adobe Audio Enhancer, re-download it after it cleans it up, and then plug it back into your video. And it, I just promise you, it's going to improve everything all the way around and make your audio sound crystal clear and very beautiful to listen to. All right, and last but not least, my favorite tool <laughs> of all time at the moment, ChatGPT. Now, we all know this AI craze, tons of platforms out there, and I know there are other competitors that people will swear by and say it's better than ChatGPT. That's cool. Go test it out. They all kind of work the same. Some of them do better things than others. But guys, listen, from a content creator standpoint, ChatGPT is going to be one of your best friends for many reasons. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I utilize it for on a daily basis. But listen, when it comes to this platform, the sky is the limit. You can get so ultra creative with just an absurd amount of things that you can do in the content creation space with ChatGPT. Uh, but I'm about to give you some of the things that I utilize it for the most. One of the number one things that I utilize this for is podcast show notes and descriptions. So what we'll do is we'll actually take the podcast. We, we uh, I own a uh, content marketing agency that manages podcasts in full for clients. And after we have created the episode, quality checked it and everything, make sure that there's no issues with it. We'll transcribe the audio, which there's plenty of transcription tools out there. We use Adobe Premiere because it does a good job of it and we don't have to pay extra for it. So it transcribes the audio. We'll take that transcription and then plug it into chat GPT and say, I need, and again, chat GPT is going to be all about the prompts. How good of a prompt you, you give it is the value in which it's going to return to you. So we'll tell it specifically, we need podcast show notes for this podcast and the transcription that we just uploaded and we need it formatted like this and we'll give it a specific formatting that we need we need it to have timestamps with the talking points summarized in less than 10 words we need a five sentence description about the episode and then any links and resources mentioned and then a closing remark and whatever however we format it and it'll spit that out in a matter of seconds now i love doing it this way because it does a really good job of contextualizing everything based off the transcription and instead of a human being coming in and doing it, I still think that there's value in a human being do it. We have a we have a full time um, uh, copywriter that's on our team that does this as well. But if you need a quick getaway, you don't have somebody on your team that can just go through and write show notes. This is going to be a really easy way to do it. Is just have Chat GPT do it, and it'll do it in a matter of seconds. So that's one of the number one ways that we utilize it. Another way is with graphics. So there's tons of like abilities that. ChatGPT could do when it comes to graphics, but specifically for like YouTube thumbnails, this is like where we can get really, really ultra creative. So one of the things that you could do is if you have, a, you know, if we have this uh, episode on YouTube go out, I might chat, tell ChatGPT, hey, I need a graphic that illustrates using these four tools. Can you give that to me? And then make sure you tell it what format you want it in. And it's going to spit that out for you. You can alter it however you want. Sometimes it'll spit it out like way too complex and make it look really weird. So I'll say, hey, I need it more like simple and more realistic. And then it'll give me a better one. And then you can really craft and critique it down to whatever you want. And you can get super creative with it. I've had ChatGPT design tattoos for me before and they look outstanding. So get specific. And that's one of the really, really easy ways that you can utilize ChatGPT when it comes to content creation, specifically for your, your YouTube thumbnails. Some of the other ways that you can use ChatGPT very creatively, and these are just kind of one-off things. Number one is you can obviously, I've and I've taught this on a previous video before, where you can utilize ChatGPT to create unlimited video topics for your content. And one of the ways that you do this, the, my favorite trick is that you go to ChatGPT, take your website or competitor's websites, copy the link, and then go back to ChatGPT and say, I need 100 video topics on what I'm an expert in based off of my website content. And then it's going to give you a hundred topics that you can go off of and you can record content on. And then you can even get more creative if you needed to and say, I need talking points and bullet points or a script for points or topics one through 25. Please give that to me. And then I'll break it down for you into scripts or break it down into you for uh, bullet points and that sort of thing. And then you hop into your videos, your Riverside, and then just start doing it. One of the cool things, a side note about Riverside is you can actually add teleprompters and uh, a script that's up at the top of your screen so you can read it as you are going through your recording. So that's a really creative way to do it. We have ChatGPT, uh, you know, design descriptions for podcasts that we're launching or, you know, specifically videos. We do it for YouTube videos as well, not just podcasts. And there's plenty of other ways to do it. We'll take it and, 
you know, have it craft YouTube titles for us on SEO basis and stuff like that. And there's just a million ways you could do it. It's unbelievable the power that this tool has. So I spent the most time on ChatGPT because there's just so many things that you could do. But I wanted to tell you the things that we utilize it for. Um, I'll give my clients scripts on recording their podcast intros and outros and literally script them exactly what's needed, but I do it off of ChatGPT. So there's a million ways you could do this. But anyway, these are my top four uh, tools and platforms that you can utilize on your content creation journey that will really, really help get you to a place where you're creating consistent, high quality content, which is highly important. So thank you guys for listening and watching. If you haven't already, make sure you have subscribed to the channel and leave a comment below if you have any questions or want any more clarity on any topics that I can talk about and create videos on. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining in and listening. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.